Greetings to all our viewers and listeners. We are back again to discuss a very interesting topic um, under the broad topic, Three Angels Messages. But today in particular, we'll be discussing the topic uh, on lesson seven, worshiping the creator. We are going to talk about worship today, very interesting. And um, to dissect the lesson today, as usual, I'm with my spiritual partner, <laughs> uh, my sister in Christ, um, who are asked to introduce herself, and as she does so, I'll ask you to pray and invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit so that we can discuss the lesson. Okay, welcome to our viewers and our listeners. Uh, my name is Sister Kumbu Mbofu. I know most of you know me. Um, shall we bow our heads in prayer? Our kind and our loving Father who is in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us once more to come together, Lord, and study your word and dig deeper into your word. We invite the Holy Spirit in a special way, Lord, because in your word you told us that when he comes, he shall lead us unto all truth. So at this moment, Lord, as we invite him, we pray that he may lead us unto all truths. May he reveal those heavenly secrets to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, so my, my name is Catherine, Catherine Saopa. I'd almost forgotten to introduce myself there. Worshipping the Creator. So like I said, we are talking about issues of worship today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, each and every one of us as human beings, we were created with an inherent yearn to worship something. Mm -hmm. Or I should say to worship before I say something. We have uh, been created with that inherent desire to worship. So today we are going to delve into the topic that will kind of like sh reveal to us that there is a being who is to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. However, as human beings, we've come up with other things, people and other deities to worship other than that being. And to kickstart our discussion um, today, I'd like my sister to read um, from the memory texts, which come from Revelation 4, verse 11. Okay. Revelation 4, verse 11. Yes. Revelation 4, verse 11, and it reads as follows. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Yes, so... Just by that verse, you can already see that there is a deity here who's saying he created, mm. right? Yes. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor because you are worthy to be worshipped. And the reason that is being given here is because and by your will, he says, and uh, to receive glory and honor, for you created all things, mm. and by your will mm. they exist and were created. Um, let's talk about creation. Let's just talk about creation. You know, I've always said to those who know me very well, my friends and uh, uh, family, mm -hmm. that for me, creation does this thing in me. You know, it reveals to me a powerful being mm. that brought these things into existence. It arouses in me a desire to adore mm. this being, a desire to worship him. Why? Because when I look at creation, Sister Kumbo, think of just yourself, mm. the anatomy of a human being. Mm. Yes, we do have medical doctors who have gone to school to kind of dissect and understand the, what he created. What he created. <laughs> but they can only do so much. They continue to discover through his wisdom, actually, that he reveals to them because he's a God who never hides anything from us. But there is a lot that is still to be discovered about just this machine. Not only the human being. Look at the animal kingdom, the diverse animals that were created, the beauty of, you know, uh, the marine world, the fish, you know, in all their diverse kinds. You, you, you just marvel at that. And the beauty, you know, sometimes you just look at a flower. Just what arose. Mm. And you think, you know, do you have anything to say just about creation, how awesome it is? Mm. You see, Sister Kelly, sometimes uh, it's, it's so easy to take things for granted, mm -hmm. you know. 
your children can easily take you for granted because they've always had you. Yes. It's just easy as human yes. beings to take this. Yes. But when you really look at creation, you know, many times I've, I've visited the beach. I've visited the KZN beaches and Cape Town beaches. Ooh. You know, every time, no matter how many times I go there and stand by the beach and Ooh. see the waves as they come, Ooh. you know, I get to experience God and his creation, you know, because, and, and what, what I've noticed me, those who stay there, they rarely go there. They don't even appreciate it. You know, they will tell you, oh, we stay here, but we, we, we don't find any reason of us going to the beach all the time because they yes. stay there. So this week's lesson is calling us to worship God because well, he created. Because he created. And I like the, 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 the examples you gave. I've always said to people, mm -hmm. if you have an atheist and you can take them to Cape Town and they remain an atheist, I'll raise my hands. Yeah. Cape Town is beautiful. Yes. The scenery there mm -hmm. should arouse your attention. Mm -hmm. to, but who made all these things? Mm -hmm. So we are talking about worship and there's a God who is saying, I created and I, I ought to be worshipped. Yes. Um, we want to read Revelation 14. Okay. Uh, if you could please open for me, um, my sister, Revelation 14, verse 7. 14 Revelation verse, verse 7, 7 yes. all right. Let, yeah. So we just want to have a look at that message because now we are, mm -hmm. we are actually uh, discussing on Monday the topic, worship the creator, worship the creator. What does Revelation 14 verse 7 say? Okay, it, say, it reads as follows, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Viewers, the discussion that we are having today is a very serious one. Yeah. This is a very serious message. Mm. What I'm saying is there is, like I said, there are a lot of beings, a lot of deities, a lot of people and things mm. that are clamoring for the worship of human beings. Mm. But when we have said all that, there is this one being who's coming and saying, my power transcends above all those other deities and all those things and people that you want to worship. Why? He says, because I created. Mm. And when you look at all these deities that are there and all these things, people or whatever it is that you worship, yes. you'll find that none of them claim to have created. Mm. So it separates this being from everything else that human beings may want to create. So what I'm saying is this is a clarion call my viewers, to each and every human being who lives on planet Earth or has ever lived, to worship this God who says, why should you worship me? Because I created. So if he created, he owns everything. You know, Siskev, there's also a, a theory that that wants to, to, to destroy the, 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 the creation theory, mm -hmm. which is evolution. Because yes. the reason why we have to worship, the only reason that's given for well, he created. created nothing else. Amen. And the enemy, of course, he comes with a, a counter to that one, evolution. And of late, the last during these last days, you find that evolution is 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 being taught more and more, and there are more and more people who are believing in it. Mm -hmm. But if you come to think of it, if you really come to study it closely, mm -hmm. evolution. The first aim of the enemy is to make sure that he diverts, he steals the worship from God, the creator, to other things, to something else. It's actually it's aiming at destroying the very foundation of our Christian faith, which is creation. It's a counterfeit message. Yes. So Satan always has a counterfeit message yes. for, the, for truth. Yes. So yes. what we are saying here is fear God and give glory. Yes. Let's just get into those words. When we say fear God, what kind of fear is that? Is it a fear of being afraid of God? Or is it a fear of, be, of respect? A fear of adoration? Mm. A fear of um, reverence. reverence? Not so much of I'm afraid yeah. of him. We cannot be afraid of God who loves us with an agape love, yeah. unconditional love. Yeah. He has proven that to us in so many ways. So that you can't fear somebody who truly loves you. Yeah. So the fear is not that of, 
of, of being afraid is that of reverence. And it says, give glory to him. Mm. How to give glory to God? Mm. By reflecting his character. Yes. For me, mm -hmm. actually, I always, when I think of this fear that we must give God, mm -hmm. I, I always imagine my own blood, earthly father. Mm -hmm. You know, in my culture, it's kept, I'm not allowed to talk to my father when I'm standing. Just mm -hmm. to stand and address my father. That's generally the African culture, I, generally. In my culture, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. It's either I must sit down, look for a chair and sit and address him, or kneel next to the chair where he's sitting or if I'm mm -hmm. going to talk to my father. So that's the fear, the reverence that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't fear that he will kill me. I don't fear that he will harm me, you know. I, I, I don't fear him in that way. But I'm, 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 I'm respecting him. I'm reverencing him because this is the man that God used to bring me to this world. Okay. So that's the same kind of fear and reverence we're talking about. Is, is, to, is to put God in his place as creator. I mean, look, he spoke this world into his existence. He didn't even use that's his... That's power his, there. That's yeah, power there. He spoke. That's speaking. Yes. That's how great he is. This kid. is a powerful God. Spoke. Mm -hmm. You know, and it came into existence. So... In, in the presence of such a person, you see, sometimes as human beings, you find people reverencing their earthly bosses. Do you mm -hmm. know there's some things that people wouldn't do in their earthly, in the presence of their earthly boss, mm -hmm. simply because their boss is there. Mm -hmm. What about God who created the world? Not only you, but the world. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Sister Kumbu, for that um, uh -huh. clarification. Yes. So it also says here, why I'm saying this is a very important and solemn message yes. that is going out there to the world and it's a clarion call to everybody that there's a being who's, 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 who's calling for your attention. He says he's to be worshipped. And he says here, for the hour of his judgment has come. Mm. There's a judgment that is coming. Mm. So he, this God, because he loves us so much, he has created us and given us a power of choice. Mm. What choice has he given us? the choice to be to worship him or not mm -hmm. why is there a choice because we are discussing the issue of the three angels messages and as we are discussing it we know that there's a great controversy that is going on mm -hmm. and the controversy is between good and evil mm -hmm. the head of the evil is satan the head of the good is god in christ so we are saying he's saying choose he therefore whom you want to worship mm. he's not forcing you to worship him mm. but he's saying there is a judgment yes. that is coming there are consequences to your choice yes. there are results that will come as to the choice that you have you, 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 you have taken mm. so we are saying a judgment is coming so you and i are going to be accountable as to what we worship and we, we worship you know viewers there's only we are being polarized into two groups here if you yeah. look at it the yeah. great controversy polarizes into two groups those who worship god and those who worship satan mm -hmm. however if you look at it god has only got um one representation that is himself christ the holy spirit the trinity that's it mm -hmm. but when you go to satan's side you can worship anything mm -hmm. And some they worship it, cows. Some they worship cows. Some vegetation. they worship their marriages. Some worship their children. Clothes, some worship cars. their education. Some worship cars. Houses. Some worship sex. So yes. There's money. There's a lot of things. You can worship anything. Mm. And the devil doesn't really care what you're worshipping. Because all that is under one umbrella. Mm. You are indirectly worshipping him. There are some who directly worship the devil. That's fine. They call themselves Satanists and all the kinds of names. But there are some who are worshipping Satan indirectly mm. through worshipping either your career or whatever it is. Mm. Where your heart is, you know it, Sister Kumbu. Yeah. That is who you are worshipping. Yes. So we are saying here, there's a God who is saying, but Judgment Day is coming. Mm -hmm. And the consequences to your choice are going to take um, take uh, are going to take place. Yes. So we are appealing, Sister Kumbu, to yes. myself yes. and to everybody that is listening now. That is it not better and worth it to worship a God who created? Yes. Why? He's the one who's making me live. For today, the gift of life came from Him. Mm. Why can't I worship that God? Mm. Why should I worship a cow? Can a cow give me a gift of gift of life? Hey, when is a creature itself? When, when is it a creature created itself? itself? And I want to take us back to another verse, Sister Kumbu, mm -hmm. about this God that we find in the book of Exodus 20, 
verse 8. So Exodus, the book of Exodus, we all know, uh, viewers, that is where the deca Decalogue is recorded. The Ten Commandments that were written with God's finger, yep. God's own very finger. And one commandment that is sitting right in the middle there, the fourth commandment speaks about this issue that we're talking about. Yes. I'll read it. 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm. Six days shall shall uh, six days you shall labor and do all your work. Mm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do you shall do no work. You nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. Now the reason why you ought to keep the Sabbath and why you ought to worship him is given in verse 11. For in six days mm. the Lord made the heavens and, and the, the, earth, earth. the sea and all that is in them yes. and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Mm. Okay, we are not really talking about mm. the Sabbath issue as such today, yes. but it's about worship. Yeah. However, the Sabbath is embedded in there because the Lord is saying, you shall stop everything on the seventh day. Why? Because you need to remember how things came into existence. Mm. You need to remember who's sustaining your life. And the only way you are going to, you are going to show out there and you are going to actually uh, 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 um, give the gospel to say I believe in a God who created is by keeping the Sabbath and worshipping him on the seventh day. Why? He gives the reason because I created. This issue of creation is a big issue. Mm, mm. It's a big issue. Because that's where everything all started. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let's look sis, Kathy, at, at, at how big God is mm -hmm. and big as he is he is close to us. Mm -hmm. A God who is closest, Kathy. Mm -hmm. I would like to read something here that really touched me. We are looking at the power of God. Mm -hmm. hey? Just to get a small idea of how unlimited God's power is, mm -hmm. let's consider just one object of his creation. We are going to consider just mm -hmm. one, the sun. Mm -hmm. They say the sun produces more energy in one second than humanity has produced by oil, gas, coal, of fire since the beginning of time. Just mm -hmm. imagine that. Yes. In one second, the sun produces, you know, this type of energy. The sun has a diameter of approximately 865,000 miles and could hold 1 million planets the size of the earth. Wow. That, that, that's how big God is. That's, that's his power. But the sun is just one of the least 100 billion stars in our galaxy, wow. the Milky Way. And only to think that big as it is, with all this power, this kid, we're told that he's also close to us. Wow. He, he comes and he addresses me. He takes care of me, protects me as if I'm the only one. Just imagine that same power that mm -hmm. did this, that created this, mm -hmm. is the same power that works in my life. Mm -hmm. That takes me, that personalizes me in God's heart. Wow. Oh. Wow. What a gospel. Yeah. What a gospel. And the other mm. way we are to see that God is close to us, let us go to what he did to John when he was in exile. Yeah. Remember, he had been persecuted. So he is a companion in tribulation. Mm. We must draw mm. hope from this story of John that yes. we have a companion in times of tribulation. Yes. What happened was, if you go to the book of Revelation, Revelation 1, yes. John reveals to us that, you know, I was in the, I was in the yes, spirit in the on the Lord's, Lord's day, yes. you know, and um, busy minding his business of worshiping God mm. on the, in the Lord's day. And the Lord's day here was the Sabbath mm. because all the apostles worshiped on a Sabbath. Yeah. So when he was doing so, and remember, he had been persecuted. How? He had been dipped, submerged into oil, yes. very hot oil. Mm. And by some miracle, he did not die. Yes. He was preserved. His life was preserved yes. by God. There's nobody who can be submerged into hot oil and not die. Mm -mm. That was a miracle. Yes. However, 
the consequences were that he lost his eyesight and obviously maybe he was in pain i'm not too sure because mm. of the burns but he so he was in tribulation and he was cast out away from his family in an island alone mm. away with no friends no family no one to talk to mm. but we have a companion even when we feel lonely mm. there is no need at all to think of suicide or to think of of doing maybe drug getting into drugs mm. or any other ways of finding companionship that is not godly because there is a Christ who cares about us he visits Jesus um in the island of Patmos and he reveals to him, to him prophecy mm. a prophecy that is, is which we are reading now where there's a message of hope he tells us about the great controversy and all the things that we are studying now he is a good god yeah. so my sister when you're going through tribulations when yeah. you're going to remember that you may, christ may not be visible to you but he's there his angels are there to protect us remember job there was mm -hmm. an, a hedge of protection of angels around him there is a whole lot of ministering for us mm. because in times of tribulations we must remember that god has does never forsake us he's not indifferent to our trials and and remember sister he, he he was he was in, on an island remember an island it's mm -hmm. all water around you the only one there you know sometimes life puts us in different islands sister mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we find ourselves lonely away from family yes sometimes some some people's loneliness comes from from divorce yes their families just 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 reject them mm -hmm. so viewers there's so many islands that the enemy may throw us in sometimes these islands they come from just from the fact that we stood up for christ some people have been dishonored by their families simply because of their faith but today's uh, presentation it's saying even if it's like that mm. on that island i don't mm. know what island it may be mm. divorce unemployment mm. whatever it is you've been dishonored for your faith just know that there is that company thank you so much for bringing that one up and i want to read here um when we say he is a god that is close to us yeah. look at what jesus says here about his followers yes i in them and you in me, mm -hmm. that they, they may be made perfect in one, mm -hmm. and that the world may know that you have sent me, and they have loved them as you have loved me. Mm -hmm. John 17 verse 23. He is a God who loves us. Do you know our relationship with this creator is a love relationship. Mm -hmm. I like the example that you gave of divorce rejection others it could be children that are rejected by parents mm. my mother dumped me i'm in an orphanage mm. my father is neglective of me rejection from friends it could be peer pressure our children are suffering pre um, uh, being rejected by peers at, at school mm. and you feel lonely but here it says ours is a love relationship with god mm. you are never alone yeah. he loves us with a love that is unconditional mm. and is always there for us. So I like the way Christ, Christ gives them his relationship with us as that of a husband and a wife. Mm. So there's no need to be lonely even mm. in divorce. Mm. When the devil comes and clamors at you, remind him that, no, I've got a companion. I'm yes. not lonely. Someone who loves me more than anyone else. Who loves me better than the husband yes. who, who divorced yes. me. <laughs> and what I like... Actually, he's so close to us that he lives in us. Mm -hmm. Remember what Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ in me. That's how close he is, this kid. He actually comes and he lives in me. You know, there's a songwriter who said, big as he is, he's small enough yes. to live in my heart. Yes. You know, compare yes. the galaxies and whatever, but he comes and he fits in this small little heart, you know. That's, that's God, that's how close he is. He actually comes and he lives in us. So I'm looking also at the issue of love. Why does he love us that much? Why does he love us so much? Uh -huh. For starters, he's our creator, he owns us. Mm. We are his possession. Yes. Don't you love your possessions? Yeah. You do. Mm. Secondly, he loves us because he, he redeemed us. Yeah. So he, he owns us. Like twice. twice, he created through us creation. through creation and through redemption. And redemption, yes. So I want to read uh, a, a, a statement that was written here by the author of the lesson. He says, "The message of God as Creator is so central to present truth, especially when evolution, even when uh, dressed up 
um, even when dressed up in creation garb, threatens to destroy the entire foundation of the Christian faith. Mm. How does evolution threaten to desire, threaten to, to, to destroy the foundation of the Christian faith? If you look at it this way, for starters, it's, it's, it's disregarding creation. Mm. Secondly, mm. when we disregard creation, it means the redemption story also. It loses meaning. It, it loses, loses meaning. meaning. It loses meaning. Definitely. So it destroys the whole gospel. So evolution on itself, I don't know what you call it, it's a theory. Yeah. But I want to call it, it's also a religion, really. Yeah. Yeah. They call it a theory, theory but it's, it's like a, a disguise. Yes. Because yes. we are being, our worship is being diverted from the creator. Mm. To something else. Which is the aim of, 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 the, of the theory. To divert so that we don't create, we, we don't worship the creator who created us. That's, that's all that there is to it. And evolution, actually, it, it yeah. destroys the whole fabric of the gospel. Because also when you look at evolution, the idea that things came into existence over millions of years mm. and will continue like that to millions of years. When the, when, when, when the actual creation happened in six days. The actual creation happened in six days yeah. and we have not existed in millions of years. We are barely yes. 7,000 years. Yes. We're actually almost just plus 6,000. Almost 6,000. Almost, 6, almost plus minus 6,000 or so. So yeah. 6,000 years compared to millions of years. So also yeah. it debunks the judgment theory. Yeah. Because if we're going to live on and on for millions of years, why should I care exactly. about what I'm doing today, what, what I do to anybody? And because also, the judgment theory then that there is going to be a day of judgment is debunked. Yes, yes. And also it's, it's also to, 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 to divert us from preparing for the judgment. Yep. I like that, preparing. To, yes, to make sure that we don't prepare. Remember, the, the, the moment we believe there's a judgment that's coming, mm -hmm. then I must make sure that I prepare. So the enemy tries to stop us from prepar preparing by making us believe that it's billions before us, billion years, and there's also mm. billion years to come. So why prepare? Why worry? Go and be merry, you know? When, when actually we know that this world is coming to an end soon, we need to prepare. Sister Kubo, let's look at victory on the cross. Let's look at what happened on the cross. Mm. This same God who created, remember, the onslaught is on Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? And yes. when we read our Bible carefully, of the Godhead between the God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The one who actually was entrusted with the um, creation was Christ. If you read the book of John, you, it's, it brings it out very clearly. And Colossians. And Colossians. Well. Jesus Christ is the one who created. Yes. You know? So the creator, Jesus Christ himself, is the same being who's now coming to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Mm to redeem us from the jaws of eternal death. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the synoptic gospel writers put it, he cries out in agony, my, my God, my God. You know, someone actually explained that to me and said, you know, the reason why he, he cried out twice, my God, my God, mm -hmm. it's because he, the third part of the Godhead, mm -hmm was hanging on the cross That's very yes remember genesis 1 verse 26 is the godhead the three of them let the us three. let us make men in our image and the, mm. that us is the three of them mm -hmm. but this time he says my god my god twice because the third one is hanging on the cross Wow, that's very powerful mm. and to think that even when we are going to be saved in heaven you, you will maintain this form yes. of, of a human being mm. for eternity. Mm. What love is that? Mm. To sacrifice his, the form that he was. Yeah. Remember, God is a spirit. Yes. He sacrificed the form that he was before incarnation yeah. to say for eternity, I will remain. He is going to be our brother. We are a people that are close to yeah. God's heart. Yeah. We are a people that are close to Jesus' heart. This is the thing that makes the devil and you know angry yes about us mm. this is why he assails us this is why he hates us mm. because we are loved by the one that he is at war with yes 
Yes, that's oh, true. Sister Kumbu. Amazing. So, um, this issue of worship, this issue of worship is a serious issue, my sister. Yes. And I'd yes. like to invite those who are watching, for those of us who are, we have not already accepted Christ as their personal savior. Mm. For those of us who are watching who are probably not Christians, mm. for those of us who do not worship the God of the Bible, for this God we are speaking about is the God of the Bible. He is the God who's saying his power transcends all other power. Mm. Why? Because he says he worships. I would like to, to invite all those who have not considered to pledge allegiance to this God, who have not considered to be on the side of this God, mm. who have not considered to worship this God, mm. to try and do so. And how you do it, just, just delve into the word. Mm. Grab your Bible, mm. read it, and find out what he has. It's a love letter. You know, the Bible is a love letter yes. to us as human beings. Read that love letter that he wrote for you and for myself and you will be able to be blessed yes. and you will be able to understand why you should drop anything else that you are worshipping mm. and worship the God of the Bible who is the creator of the universe and all that is in it. Amen. Yes. Um, what would be your closing remarks, uh, my sister? My closing remarks is that, is, is that uh, remark is that um, as the creator, the, the only reason why he deserves to be worshipped, Sister Kebe, mm -hmm. If, it, if you're not going to worship God for any other reason, let it be for the fact that he is the creator. Do you know he's the only God who's got creative powers? Mm -hmm. Only. Not, not, not anyone else but him. Doctors have tried to create. They failed. The devil himself has tried. He failed. Because there's only one person, one God, who's got creative powers, which is the God in heaven. And this is the reason why he is fighting the fourth commandment, Siskiyot. Remember, he's fighting the Sabbath day mm -hmm. issue because mm -hmm. that's the only one that reveals God mm -hmm. as the creator. That's the reason why he's fighting it. He does not mind people keeping others, and but this one, because it reveals God as the only creator. Wow, wow. We thank God for that. And um, yeah. my closing remark would be, I would like to say to our viewers, especially in view of the verse that we read, Exodus 20, verse 8 of the fourth commandment, mm -hmm. they are a people here on planet Earth who pledge allegiance to this God of the, of the Bible mm -hmm. who created. They are a people here on planet Earth who are worshipping God on this particular day, not that they worship him on one day, but they keep holy this day that was asked to be kept, kept holy yeah. for the one reason that God created. Yeah. And this is, I, I would like to read actually before I finish um, Ephesians 4 verse 5 and 6, Sister Kumbo. It says, we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, mm -hmm. one God, and father of all, who is above all, and through all and in him, and through all and in him you all. So there's one God, there's one faith, and one baptism. That's what the, one, the word of God is saying. But in, we find that there's, there's a myriad of, a myriad of churches, denominations, and ways Beliefs. of worship. I'd like to say, prayerfully consider for the Lord to guide you and lead you to the group of people that are worshiping the creator because he created, yes. that are keeping the Sabbath day holy because he ordered it to be kept holy because he created. Yes. The issue of creating is a big, creation is a big issue. May we ask God to help us and we are going to close the lesson now. And as we close, um, I'll pray. Okay to ask God to, to help us, Sister Kumbu, to make the right choice yes. as to whom we worship, especially as we're drawing close to the end of time. Yes. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for you have never left anything to chance. You have revealed everything that is necessary for our salvation yes. in your word. Father, we ask that you may melt and destroy the spirit of stubbornness,
you may be able to give us the spirit of submitting to your Holy Spirit as he speaks to us when we read your word and in our conscience so that we may be able to understand, Father, that when we do not choose to worship you, we are joining the losing team. Mm. Oh, Lord, be with us and help us, Lord, for those of us who are already aware about this message mm. to be able to lift up Christ so high so that he may be able to draw many unto him. We are going to the close of time now, Lord, and you have said unless this gospel has spread throughout the whole globe, we will not come. Mm. Oh, Father, I pray for every listener, those of us who are Christians, those who are not, those who worship other deities that are not the God of the Bible. May you speak to them, Lord, and may they have a spirit of one to hear more about a powerful God who transcends above every power. This is my prayer in the prayer of in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.